Brett Allen with The Brett Allen Show, chatting with the wonderfully talented cast and director of this film, The Shift, Chris Brock Neal. Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Thanks for having us, Brett. Well, Brett. Thank hey, you. Brett. Yes. Well, I have to say, we'll start with you, Neil. This is a great film. Now, I've watched lots of interviews with you before, and you're very particular at this stage about your projects and what you find interesting and what you choose to do. I would love to know what your process was for this film in particular, and what was it, maybe one or two things that interested you as a storyteller and made you decide you wanted to commit your time to it? Well, you know, if possible, and it's not always possible, I love to be able to be part of stories that push the agenda that my wife, Ravay, and I truly believe in, and that is to give glory to God in all of our projects. Yes. It doesn't have to be shoveled down people's throats. It can be lightly in the backdrop. We've done some Westerns that do that. We've done some action films. There's one action film I did called Boone that that I wrote and, and produced with Rebe and starred in. Um, he's a hitman that finds his calling uh, through God. And that's a a concept that hasn't been done too often, but it was a hit. And I thought, oh, we're doing something here that's kind of interesting and people are gravitating towards it. So when they said, well, we got this this great faith-based based film that's sci-fi, it's action, it's a love story. I'm like, oh, let me read the script. And I read the script. And I was like, this is a fantastic script, but I can't play this character. This this character is just, I can't play the devil. And then I spoke with my wife, Reve, and she read the script. And she's like, well, look, you're an awesome, maybe the best villain in Hollywood. Yes. You have, <laughs> you have a fantastic relationship with God. You have to do this because there's a reason why they asked you to do this. Not exactly sure what it is but there's a reason for it. Uh, and so she also said that you can infuse a humanity in, into playing Lucifer that I don't think any non-believer could ever do. And that kind of hit me. And that's what I tried to do. I tried to infuse that into playing this character that everyone thinks would be the stereotypical devil. I didn't, I would want to have no part of that. I wanted to make him as human and caring. You know, like when I talk about when, the waitress is taken off and she's going to be shifted and she's going to probably end up in a psych ward. Well, you see my character genuinely care like, Oh, I don't know. Okay. But that's your choice. But this is, this is not the right thing, but okay. Boom. And what happens thereafter? And then the audience sees it. And then by the end of the film, although you see me getting so on Kevin is why won't you pay allegiance to me? Why do you want to give it to him so much? And then he shows me why. And you see on my face, I wish I had the belief that Kevin had, because I had it once, but I lost it along the way. And that's something that we all do. We all lose our faith along the way at some, sometimes. I lost my faith years ago when I, I, I was fired from the show and I couldn't work for two years and I didn't make any money and I lost my house, my cars, my everything. And uh, I remember saying to God, why have you forgotten about me? And as soon as it came out of my mouth, I just started crying and realized how selfish I'd become. And not 60 seconds later, I got a phone call from Graham Yost, the creator of Justified, and said, hey, you want to be the villain on Justified this year? And I said, yes, I do. And that was my comeback. And yes. ever since, since that moment, I haven't taken one line or one bit of dialogue and one film that I've ever been in for granted. So awesome. I want to crush it. I want to swing for the fences and I want God to be proud of whatever I do. So the question was, why would I do a film like this? Because I, I I just had this feeling that God was calling me to do it thanks to the amazing brain of my wife, but thanks to the amazing brain of Brock and what he created for us in the world and the environment that he built. Yeah, very cool. Well, Brock and Chris, this question is for both of you as we are coming towards the end of our time here. These are so fun. They just go so fast. I, I It's like I want to embrace the moment for sure. But this is for both of you. You both have done a lot of great projects. Uh, Chris, we'll start with you and then we'll move to Brock. If there was one message, I mean, this is obviously an important story. We're talking about very specific things. What would be one thing you want the audience to take away from if anything, uh, as a message, uh, as an overarching thing from the story, we'll go with you, Chris, and then we'll wrap with Brock. Sure. Just that it's never too late, um, that you can be broken and feel totally unworthy and, and go through extraordinary trials and tribulations, but that there is a loving God who created the universe 
and who wants to be in personal relationship with you. And to be aware that there's also a devil who wants to be in relationship with you. And you have to make a choice. What story are you going to believe? Is it the story of your unworthiness or is it the story of your redemption? Is it the story that love ultimately can can help you find your way home? Um, I read the script. I was blown away by it. And it was an honor to play this part. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, I love movies that when you ask 10 different people, what do they mean and what are they trying to say? You get 10 different answers. Those yeah. are my favorite kinds of movies. And my hope is that this is among those movies, that there are conversations that happen after seeing this movie. And from the early screenings we've had, it seems that's what's, what's happening. Neil's had that experience with his own family. Um, but if there is if there is one thing that I can point to that uh, that I take away and that I'm sure I hope others can too, it's that there is hope. There's hope within whatever dark circumstance you may find yourself in, whether it's of your own making or or something that's been thrust upon you. There is a hope to be had. There is light available to you. There is beauty. There is goodness available to you, even in this world, even in the dire circumstances we sometimes find ourselves in. Uh, there is something worth hanging on to for me that's faith for me that's 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 the love that i've experienced in my life um and i think i think this movie has something to say about that yes well as a believer i'm on board with this film 100 percent. when the opportunity came to talk to all of you i was like absolutely i think we need more films like this that are quality competitive with the industry but yet aren't not that there's anything wrong with some mindless entertainment because you both, mm -hmm. Neil, Chris, you, you've made some really great movies, but I mean, uh, yeah, we, <laughs> we're all about poppy. You, you can say it out loud, Brad. It's okay. You gotta make money well, I'll, I'll I'll tell a quick story, Neil. We met years ago from you were on a plane from Albuquerque to L.A., and then we shared the same flight back from L.A. to Albuquerque, and you took pictures with everybody. You shared your faith. And uh, I know the show you're working or talking about because I was the PA on it at the time. So um, congratulations. This is very cool. I'm excited. Uh, you all have done great work. And I really can't wait for people to watch this, uh, the shift. And uh, thank you all for your time. It's been a blessing chatting with you. The more people who go out to watch this film sends a message to Hollywood. Yes. I'm tired of the dark films that they put out there. And I'm guilty, Chris. We're all guilty of it. But if we can have an opportunity to make more films like this through Angel Studios, the only way to keep this going is to support it. So go out this weekend, see the film, buy tickets, buy tickets with friends, buy tickets for people who can't afford tickets on the website. And by doing so, by getting the numbers up, Hollywood has to pay attention to make films that the whole family can go and see. Talk about dark subject matter, but at the end, there's light instead of darkness. And that's the angel way. And let's keep it cooking. And it all depends on how many people go out this weekend and support this film. So please yeah. go and support it. The math is, yeah. it is simple. It's the bigger the box office, the more movies like this will get made. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all for your time. Thanks, Brett. Thank you, Brett. Bye, Brett. Thank you.